O.P. Two initials that for a brief time changed jazz bass playing forever. Oscar Pettiford. His name is not as recognizable as some of the others. Ray Brown, Paul Chambers, Scott LaFaro, but he's no less important in the history of the music. There was about a 10 year time period from the early 1940s to the 1950s when Oscar Pettiford was the most innovative, in demand, exciting and important bass player on the jazz scene. His discography alone reads like a who's who in jazz after World War II. Coleman Hawkins, Thelonious Monk, Earl Father Hines, Art Tatum, Art Blakey, Sonny Rollins, Duke Ellington, Kenny Dorham, Woody Herman, Ben Webster, Milt Jackson, and many, many others. A record with OP is guaranteed to be a swinging affair with a huge, buoyant jazz bass sound and the most creative and amazing bass solos you'll probably ever hear. It is said that Jimmy Blanton figuratively passed the baton to Oscar Pettiford and that OP's playing was the bridge that brought us into that modern era of jazz that we love so much from the late 1950s to today. He is definitely one of the brightest stars in the jazz bass playing universe. He died far too soon and in my opinion, doesn't really get the recognition that he deserves. Oscar Pettiford was born on September 30th, 1922 in Okmulgee, Oklahoma, one of 10 children. At the age of three, his family relocated to Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Pettiford family had a band which performed around Minneapolis. OP started singing and dancing before taking up the piano at age 12 and finally started playing bass at the age of 14. In 1942, after some encouragement from the great bassist Milt Hinton, who was traveling through town with Cab Calloway's band, OP went on the road with the band of saxophonist Charlie Barnett. It didn't take long for him to make his mark on the scene. He moved to New York in 1943 and started attending the famed jam sessions at Minton's Playhouse in Harlem with the likes of Thelonious Monk, Kenny Clark, and others. They were playing a new kind of music that the press would dub bebop. Early on, he recorded with the likes of Coleman Hawkins, Earl Hines, and Ben Webster. He played on 52nd Street in the band of Roy Eldridge and co-led a bebop group with Dizzy Gillespie at the Onyx Club. From 1945 to 1948, Pettiford played in the Duke Ellington Orchestra, recording the Liberian Suite album, and also appearing on the Carnegie Hall concert albums from 46 and 47. In the spring of 1948, he played at the famed Three Deuces Jazz Club with the Earl Garner Trio. Very soon afterwards, playing with a young up-and-coming trumpet player named Miles Davis. After that, he formed an all-star group with Fats Navarro on trumpet, Lucky Thompson and Dexter Gordon on saxophone, Milt Jackson on vibes, Bud Powell on piano, and Kenny Clark on drums. Damn. In 1949, Pettiford joined clarinetist Woody Herman's band, thus beginning another chapter in the jazz pantheon, the cello as a featured solo instrument in the music. Now the cello had existed for some time in jazz music. Early on the instrument was used primarily in a bass function playing bass lines. The first time the cello was really played as a solo instrument in a modern jazz context was by another bassist named Harry Babison. Babison was experimenting as early as 1947 playing jazz cello with pianist Dodo Marmorosa and before OP he played in Woody Herman's band. So the story goes that Woody Herman introduced Pettiford one night for his big bass solo and instead of walking out with his instrument he walked out with a cello as a joke. Little did we know, he tuned the instrument all in fourths like a bass, only an octave higher. He started taking solos on the instrument and playing melodies on the instrument. He even broke his arm in 1949, allegedly playing baseball with the Woody Herman band. Unable to play his bass, he found that he could play the cello with his arm in a sling 
and he continued to play it through his recovery. The cello would become his second voice and an instrument he would record on along with bass for the rest of his life. Check out his 1953 album Discoveries, where he's backed by a band that includes Billy Taylor on piano and Charles Mingus on bass. His plucked cello lines would become the alter ego to his already amazing bass playing. Into the 1950s, O.P. really started hitting his stride as a great band leader, but also playing as a sideman on some of the most amazing jazz records that were ever recorded. He led a popular big band that included musicians at various points in time like Art Farmer, Donald Byrd, Benny Golson, and Gigi Grice, but also played on legendary sessions, including Thelonious Monk's Brilliant Corners, and one of my absolute favorite records, the great trio date with Sonny Rollins, The Freedom Suite. In 1959, following the lead of several other expat jazz musicians, Oscar Pettiford moved to Europe, and he started playing with musicians the likes of Stan Getz and the European guitarist Attila Zoller. The last gig OP ever played was on September 4th, 1960. He wasn't feeling well the day after, and he was rushed to the hospital where he fell into a coma. His death was attributed to a viral infection. He was only 37 years old. In a post pettiford world, it might be hard to tell the kind of impact that OP had on jazz and bass playing in general. However, I guarantee if you sit down and listen to some of these amazing recordings that he left for us, it's easy to hear his brilliance and how much of an impact he left on all of the music. First of all, Pettiford was a virtuoso who synthesized the bebop linear concept and vocabulary on the bass like no one ever had before him. He was, in my humble opinion, the most creative and rhythmic bassist of his time. And he was the first bass player since Jimmy Blanton to show us how beautiful and lyrical the double bass could sound as a solo instrument. OP was one of the first jazz bassists my teacher steered me toward at a young age. When I hear him, I hear effortless playing. He makes playing the bass sound light and easy and more elegant than anybody I can think of. When I find that I'm digging in and playing too hard, I try to force myself to play like Oscar Pettiford, to fill up the music with sound rather than with volume. It's sad to think of how much more music Oscar Pettiford could have played had he lived longer. What he did leave us with is really quite amazing and beautiful though in any era. So if you haven't checked him out, do yourself a favor and go and listen to some of his music. You won't regret it. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you know I'll love it if you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, please click that subscribe button so you can stay up to date for brand new original content of the jazz bass variety coming at you every single week. Until next time, take care of yourself and please love your neighbor.